I think there are two major blocks of evidence around budget support. And what's striking about all of these is how strongly positive they are about the impact of budget support. Whether it's an ability to increase the funding for the social sector, whether it's the improvement that's been seen in public financial management, on a range of areas we've seen very positive impacts of budget support. One of the issues, the evaluation questions that we think, I think we need to reset in a way, is the issue about when we evaluate budget support, do we look on that in isolation or do we also compare and contrast the options around projects? At the moment we are sort of evaluating projects and whether projects work and whether they, you know, uh, and they may work in their own terms, but as we've noted before, if you don't actually have the kids in the school, there's no point of actually building the school. Um, and I think this is the challenge we have around budget support. We need to think about uh, compare and contrast how would it have worked had we tried to achieve the same effect with projects. Because some things clearly, like the introduction of social protection systems or the funding of uh, school fees for children, you really can't do that through a project modality. And I think that's something we're missing in the current sets of evaluation. I think one of the major things we need to do is we need to differentiate. We've tried to do with one instrument too many things. Uh, and I think we need to recognise that we have, for example, a different sets of challenges in fragile states than we have in, in others. Uh, and I think this is where the communication has been very helpful in being very clear and distinguishing, uh, being much clearer about what we're trying to do. Whereas I think if you try and do everything just with a single instrument, that becomes, you know, it becomes self-defeating. I think one of the other lessons that we get is, is an old lesson in a way, which is that you can't buy reform, but you can support reform. So I think conditionality has been very useful, for example, around decentralisation in Mali, decentralisation in Ethiopia. We've seen that has worked, worked very well. But on areas where there is no agreement between the development partners and the government, you can't just say, well, because we put it in, a, in, a, in a, an agreement around budget support, this is going to achieve the change. And I think this is where we've seen you know, real problems in making progress, say, on corruption or tackling some, tackling some of those much harder areas.